All right. Welcome back, everybody. I am your host, the Wolf of Crypto. You guys are tuned in to another episode of the Wolf of Crypto Podcast. Got ourselves a, uh, another guest here. Very excited for this particular project that he's going to be talking about. Got Mr. Jonathan, CEO of SkyTrade. And uh, before we even dive into this particular project today, Jonathan, uh, welcome to the show, man. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great to be here. Uh, yeah. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah. I suppose a little bit about me. Yeah. I'm a CEO and co-founder of SkyTrade. Uh, we are an air rights marketplace. My background is in marketplace with more kind of traditional web two versions like uh, rideshare, food delivery. Yeah. And we're building out what we seem to be is the only air rights marketplace currently. And we're building it. Yeah. On blockchain with Solana at the moment. Yeah. That's a quick intro to me. <laughs> awesome. 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 Now, Obviously, the term air rights, I'm probably sure that not a lot of people are coming to that term. So could you walk us through what is air rights? Why is it important? Why should we check out SkyTrade and check out this marketplace and potentially maybe earn something? Yeah, absolutely. So air rights, when we talk about air rights, we're talking about the space above land and property. So in the US, in the UK, Canada, Australia, a bunch of jurisdictions, the space above people's land and property up to a certain height is owned by them. And that's known as their air rights. And there's a bunch of kind of uses for that air rights, those air rights traditionally. Let's say in real estate, people, let's say you have a building with two stories, you don't want to build an extra three, that you don't have the money or you don't want to, you can sell that right to someone, they can come in and build, that's one use case. You can also in certain jurisdictions transfer that use or that right, if you like, to your neighbor or to someone down the block. So they can build higher if they've maxed out their zoning. So that's a real estate one. Also, you can use it to protect views. So uh, if I have a, let's say a condo, I have a nice view of the Empire States. I want to protect that view because it's really valuable. It increases the value of my condo. I can buy the air rights along to protect it. Also advertising companies buy the air rights to protect the view of their advertising billboards effectively. Mm -hmm. um, it's very valuable to them. That's like the real estate use case. So. The other use case we have then is within the drone industry, so urban air mobility. So when you look at the drone industry, there's a kind of a couple of blockers to, to getting it scaling, if you like. One is regulation, which is being eased at the moment. There's a lot of change happening there. And then the other one is because this is private airspace, you need permission to fly your drone in. If you're commercial, you don't worry too much about the hobby guys, but the commercial, <laughs> they need permission to be in it. So what we do is we, tokenize air rights, we make them available for people to trade, but we also make them available for people to rent. And when we say people, we really mean drone companies mm -hmm. so that they can come in and they can rent the space for a particular set of time. Uh, and the people who own those air rights can get some income from it. And um, so that's one of the ways you can receive income from it. The other way is just to trade them. So one of the things we're bringing people into, uh, into the air rights market to actually trade air rights uh, when traditionally mm -hmm. they're to be able to own them. So traditionally, it's been a really opaque market. It's very hard to get into. Usually it's by high net worth individuals who know somebody who knows somebody who buys these air rights and all that kind of stuff. Whereas when right. you bring it into crypto, uh, you can actually just make a trade more freely. Uh, you can trade for less as well. And you can trade these um, air rights in all sorts of jurisdictions in the US. It doesn't just have to be like New York. You can trade mm -hmm. them in Florida, you can trade them in Arkansas, whatever it is. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's what the air rights are. They're the space above property uh, and we bring them into a liquid market to make them trade effectively for people. Okay. I mean, I mean that makes sense. It's interesting because I want to touch on, you said the real estate particular cases. So let's just say somebody does buy their air rights above their property. Now, what happens when they decide to sell their property? Do those air rights go with them? Do they have to transfer those over to the new property owner? What type of situation would look like for that particular sure. example? Sure. So if the air rights have been like sold, like outright sold to somebody, whoever owns them then owns them. So if the property underneath it is sold, whoever buys the property doesn't buy the air rights because the air rights have been separately sold. But mm -hmm. what we find with people, what they're doing is not necessarily all the time selling the air rights. They're looking to lease them uh, or they're looking to put in what they call easements. Maybe to describe an easement. The best way to describe an easement is uh, around an airport, for example. What happens there when an airport is built, the airport authority will buy the air rights around the airport from the private property owner. So the airplanes can go in and out through the private airspace, but that's limited. 
So the mm -hmm. easement is limited. So when you sell the house, the easement disappears effectively. So you can do both things. You can do it any ones you want. Some people are happier to lease them for, let's say, like 10, 20, 30 years. Other people are happy to sell them outright. Now, if you go and sell them outright, let's say for in New York, for example, where you can transfer the air rights, if you sell them outright and transfer them, yeah, sure, you can't then build into them because they've been moved and transferred. But you can right. lease them, and then if you sell your property underneath, that lease can expire, or you can sell the lease with it as well. So there's a number of permutations you can do, yeah. That's pretty cool. Now, because, again, as far as a marketplace, now, are you guys, like, the only ones right now out there trying to do this, or... Is there a competition? Could you kind yeah. of walk us through what it looks like? So I'm pretty sure anybody that might be watching or listening, they're probably thinking, what? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Rice, this just yeah. Yeah, sounds yeah, yeah. kind of weird, maybe, or just the sure. understanding yeah. of it. it just, it's, it's very different and very unique. It is, yeah. So no, I was really interested in learning absolutely. more about the project because it's like, air rights, you can lease, you can earn, you can... I mean, this is different. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty unique. The, the concept of air rights has been around for quite a while. So actually it goes right back to Roman times uh, where oh, they wow. used to, <laughs> yeah, it used to be what they term uh, from heaven to hell is what you owned. So if you owned a piece of land, you owned it right through to from heaven, right the way down to hell. That was what <laughs> was. That's changed over the years and they've had to put in some sort of limits and so on. But yeah, now it's only up to a certain height. So it's been around for a while. The concept has been there for a while. And it's been utilized, as I said, in, to date in kind of larger cities and by high net worth people or larger real estate companies. And when they go in to buy something, a lot of the time they'll try and accumulate the air rights to either build higher or else to protect views or else just to protect our interest. Because what they might do is they might buy the air rights and then like next year, they'll buy the underlying property. So they do a bunch of things. And that's what's been going on as I said, it's quite opaque, like in this kind of, in this world where not many people in retail are, are would know about it. So yeah, that's how we, we came upon it. But in terms of competition, so there's no one directly doing what we're doing in terms of how we're doing it. So mm -hmm. there is a market right now. So if you want to buy air rights, there's nowhere you can go. So you can't go to like airrights.com and right. say, hey, I want to buy $50,000 of air rights. There's nowhere to do that. But you can go to a broker, a real estate broker, and you can say, hey, I want to buy air rights. And do you have any? Now, chances are they'll say, not really. We don't have any separately. Are you thinking about where you might want them? You might say, hey, yes, I want them like on this block in New York. And they say, I don't know. I'll have to try and talk to someone and find someone. And there's this whole kind of exploratory phase where you're trying to go through that. And that's all just a lot of effort and a big lift. So generally, right. it doesn't happen that fluidly. So there's no one in kind of Web3 or crypto doing it, if you like, um, at the moment, certainly not the way we're doing it. Uh, so yeah, by tokenizing it, we actually just enable people to trade it much easier, much quicker, uh, to know what they're trading and to see what's trading as well. The only other competition which is in the kind of area of what we're doing is within the kind of the drone industry. There are some businesses who are working to help drones uh, not knock into each other that kind of thing but it's again not what we're doing we're very much our kind of customer is the person who owns the real estate or the person who wants to trade air rights those are our main customers we're not really interested in building software to prevent drones hitting each other other people do that much better than we do what we do <laughs> really well what they do they do really well so yeah you won't really see any direct competition at the moment we're, we're still relatively early uh we have a bunch of air rights in the system quite a lot like over eight thousand. Um, valued at about 30 million. Um, so what our contention is, we're starting to partner with real estate companies and they're putting in their air rights. So by doing that, we're building this network out. And then by using people to build the network in kind of areas where there are drones and they get incentivized for that, we can then build the network there as well. So our kind of thesis, if you like, once we get the network moving, because of those network effects, we build effectively a little bit of a moat. That's what we're trying to do. Right. And yes, yeah, so far we're doing well, but yeah, so that's where we are with competition. Okay, cool, cool. Now I was on your guys' website. I see how you guys got these air right prices, Orlando, Chicago, Miami. Some are trending up, some are trending down. As far as like the features, could you describe some of the key features that make SkyTrade unique and how consumers that are possibly looking to buy some air rights and earn income how they can go ahead and come onto the website and basically do all that. Sure. So I suppose to maybe give you a couple of examples how, uh, of how people use it. First of all is the people who own air rights to claim them. Let's say it's not a large real estate company. Uh, if it is, they just give us a database. We do it for them. <laughs> individual property or home, you go in, you put in your address, 
you claim it, you click, click claim, uh, and then we check that in the databases in the county registries to make sure that property exists uh, and that you are you, and make sure that's all, all tied up, and then we tokenize it, and then we make it available. At the moment, you can go onto the, the product, at the moment you can go onto the, the, uh, the web, and you can rent airspace right now. So this is just show you how it's done. Effectively. So you can go in and you can rent an individual piece of airspace for 30 minutes right now for a couple of bucks, just to show you how it's done. That's all on mainnet, ready to go. Then we have what we call uh, the auction house. So that at the moment is gated. So it's white listed and people can uh, sign up at the moment. You can go in there and you can sign up now, put onto the wait list and we'll invite you in. And there's where you can actually trade the air rights. So we, as I said, we have about eight and a half thousand parcels there. And the reason we have it gated is we're just making sure that it all works as we want it to work. So we don't right. want it to explode on us. Uh, <laughs> and make sure that like we're giving a, a good experience to everyone and getting kind of positive feedback or negative feedback is fine, but just so we can fix the product as we go. Right. So yes, you go in there and that auction house, basically it has listings of individual air parcels where they are and you can place a bid. Uh, and the, the bid is a limited time because it's an auction and whoever's the highest bid wins that air rights. And then what happens as well is if you want to purchase air rights and they don't have an auction, we have a feature we're developing and you can just nominate any one of them on a map and you can just throw in a price, whatever you think it's worth, whatever you think you might be able to get it at. And if mm -hmm. I own that air right, I can go, oh, okay, hey, look, I've got an offer for five grand for my air rights, accept, decline, or set an auction. And it just gets the whole thing moving. So those are the kind of features. And we also have a feature there where you can actually put in your address or any address, it doesn't have to be your address, and it'll spit out the estimated value of those air rights as well. And the way we get that is we pull in a bunch of data. Uh, it's not quite live, but semi-live sales data, as live as it can be, right? Which <laughs> yeah. is you know, it's close to live. And we pull all that in, and then we run a few algorithms through it. We pull in a layer of some other information, and we give you what the air rights price in that area for that particular location is. So that helps people understand, hey, I know there's going to be, for example, a change in zoning in uh, Sarasota, just for example, or I believe there will be. Okay, now it looks like a good time to go in and buy some air rights. So I'll go in there, I'll buy some air rights. I think they're low. I'll hold on to them for a week, two weeks, whatever I want. It doesn't really matter. And then I'll sell them on or I'll just keep holding them. Uh, or else the other one we're seeing people and real estate people is they're looking at where drone delivery is going to be expanding. So at the moment it's expanding relatively quickly, not rapidly, but relatively quickly. And those air rights are starting to become much, much more valuable. So people are going, hey, okay, so drones are going to go into this area. Let's say wherever it is, Dallas, this particular town, I'll purchase some air rights here from the owners, and then I'll be able to receive an income from the drone, but also those will be going up in value. I'll be able to sell them on as well. So that's what you can do on the platform. As I said, the, the, the what we call the auction house is gated right now, but if you go in, we have like over 20,000 people who've signed up. Uh, and we're bringing people in different areas as well, separately, because we want them to be able to trade from certain areas and see what the behaviors are as well. And most mm -hmm. of those signups are crypto traders, right? So <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the real estate guys are looking to trade like large blocks in different kind of cities, but the crypto traders are just looking to come in and get some sort of return or passive income from it as well. Yeah. One of the other things we have as well is worth saying for this kind of drone uh, side of the business. So in order for us to know where the drones have flown, so to know the drones have been in somebody's airspace, we developed and launched an app. Uh, you can get it on Android now. It'll be mm -hmm. on iOS in a couple of weeks, and it'll be on individual receivers as well. And you can just, it's free. You can just switch on that and you can track the drones. So basically for getting that data, we incentivize people. So let's say you live in an area where there are drones, you download the app. Right now you can go and pick up all these signals for us. It's really valuable to the network. We'll incentivize you right now with tokens, sorry, with uh, points right now, but tokens are on the way, but right now with points and you can pick up those, all that data. And that's really valuable to you because you'll make something from that, but also it helps us because we can see where the drones have been or are going. So that's how we're building that kind of side of the deep in network app. Okay. Cause as you're talking, I was thinking of a question here, um, especially when it comes to like use case, because you brought up some good examples and I'm thinking, because I know you brought up views. So it seems like views are something that's pretty valuable, especially if you have, let's say, I'm going to use this. I'm in California. I'm going to use Malibu as, a, as an example. You got a beautiful property on Malibu on the cliff and <laughs> your view is the ocean and it looks just really. So if you obviously, you know, you buy that air right and I guess people could 
come to your air right to see that view? And is that where I guess you earn because somebody's coming to that air right to see that particular view of whatever that might yeah, be? You, Am you, I kind of on the right track? You or? can do it that way for sure. The ones we've seen with the people who are buying air rights to protect their views, really they're doing it to maintain or increase the value of their property on the basis okay. of having that view is valuable, right? So right. Uh, if you have a, a neighbor and their view is blocked by a, a condo block or yours is like straight to the ocean, which is more valuable, the one of the ocean, right? So that's what mm -hmm. people do. Well, you pay for that privilege to have that gotcha. view, right? You pay for right. it. But yes, in, in terms of what you're saying, it's interesting though, because when we look at some hotels that have done this in certain cities, they've bought the air rights. They've done that so that they can charge higher prices for their rooms, right? So it's what you're saying, right? But yes, yeah, if you have a beautiful home and you want to charge people to come look at a view, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was just thinking, I'm like, man, because the concept of it is very, like you said, very intriguing. And this is very something that's new. And I was thinking with Vegas, if them making all these different moves, like mm. they got the open athletics coming out there. So I'm pretty sure those air rights are going to be insane because the people that are going to be building that stadium, I believe are the same architectures that build T-Mobile arenas. Right. It's supposed to be like state of the art. They might have some rooms that you can rent out and look on the field. I know some air rights in certain places are going to be pretty valuable. And Absolutely. the fact that they can increase your property value, that kind of changes the game. Because now it's when you decide to sell, it makes your, your mental process a little bit different. Because now it's Absolutely. like look, these air rights, that's like a supplement to my property that's increasing my value. So now it's okay, I have these couple options. So yeah, absolutely. And, and when you think about it, then for the trading side, let's say you're a trader and you're not necessarily looking to buy them for your own house, but you can figure out, or maybe you take a kind of a view and you say, Hey, okay, so I know this is going to happen here, or it looks like that's going to happen there. If I buy these air rights down with visibility of a, the beach or the lake or whatever, that's going to be valuable to someone at some point in time. It might be valuable in a week or a month or whatever. So yeah, there's all those kind of options for people to figure out and consider. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Now, as far as the, I know you touched on it a little bit, the, as far as how you can earn income with your air rights, as far as people that are just coming in, like I said, they might just be investors, traders. That passive income, I know you mentioned you can lease them. So mm -hmm. is there different lease terms that you indicate as the air right owner, or is there like a set marketplace or set standard that you guys put into place? Could you kind of touch a little bit on the whole income and how the leasing kind of works? Sure, sure. So yeah, so the way the leasing works is ultimately the air rights owner gets the say. We put in some default options for them. They can alter these. This is a very open market. We're not there to control it. The market will control it. The people who own the air rights and the buyers right. and the leases, right? So that's how we want people to, to deal with it. We want the market to decide. So the lease, the way it works is, so again, I'll go back to the example of the drones because this is the kind of the live one. Drones are doing delivery from about 30 odd locations, certainly Walmart locations in the US at the moment. Those drones, when they fly through, if they don't have permission to be there, it's trespassing. So they need permission, right? So the permission that we aggregate and give to them through our platform, we charge a rent for. So if you own those air rights, you receive a rent, right? So by receiving that rent, those air rights themselves go up in value because they're a more valuable asset, effectively. And those can then be leased off. So if you own the, own the, um, the air rights, you can just take the income yourself and the passive income, that's fine, you can do that. Or alternatively, you can lease that off to someone. So you can say, hey, here's my air rights. They're receiving income in from, from the drones uh, and you can buy that and you can receive that income. So there's all those kind of, if you like, different ways you can actually create it. One of the other things we're looking at as well, we haven't got it launched, but we're looking at is actually putting these, if you like, highways in the sky together, right? So let's say you right. have, you, you have a, like a group of houses in a neighborhood and there's a flight path that you know is popular because it goes from, let's say, the Walmart to particular location or whatever it is, you can put those together and then lease that off as one kind of particular kind of road, if you like, or highway. Um, so there's those options as well. So yeah, there's a bunch of options to receive the passive income from it as well. One of the things we're looking at, not necessarily building ourselves, but talking to other projects, is then that these, because they're assets, could then be used as collateral. And so people could then use them for other purposes as well. So yeah, that's one of the other things we're looking at. So yeah. Okay. That's pretty cool. Now. 
as on the website, like I said, I was just browsing here. Um, I see you guys have a referral program, which is obviously cool. So people can, I guess, earn through that way as well. Now, is the, because I know you guys, your token is not released yet. I'm pretty sure that's going to be something that's going to be released down the line. Sure. Eventually, will people be able to earn income through your guys' token, or is it going to be just how you earn income right now? Is it going to be like more options down the road as you guys do? Sure. Get your token rolling? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and you mentioned the referral program. Yeah. So actually it's worth saying, so the referral program works in a kind of an interesting way. So you can, ref you don't have to claim air rights to refer someone in, right? So you can just refer people in who have air rights, they claim mm -hmm. them. And also when you refer someone in, anytime their air rights are used, let's say for the drone income or whatever income, you receive a residual from that. So you receive 10% and that's from us. That's not from the okay. person who owns the air rights. So that's a way for us to build the network. So anyone can go what right now, get their code and they can just scatter it around <laughs> whoever they want. And that's useful for them because as I said, it's points right now, but there will be a token. So yeah, the token, ultimately the way the token is gonna work and obviously the way you have to work things in the US, we're a US business, we have to be careful we're not getting into right. these issues, right? So we have to be quite careful. But the way it works is that token itself will form the backbone of the income to the protocol, right? So anytime anyone trades anything on the on the marketplace or rents, there'll be an exchange mechanism there for the token itself. So every mm -hmm. time the, uh, a use of the rental engine or the auction house, that particular token will go up in value. But other uses will be over time. I don't want to release everything too quickly. There will be a bunch right, of right. But fundamentally that token, when we get it out, we don't have it out yet. When we get it out, will actually be quite a valuable, a valuable token because the entire, the way we've built it, the entire protocol, um, all the value will flow into that, right? So that's, right. that will be the backbone of it. So for anyone who's interested, my suggestion would be gather as many points as you can right now, go out, refer people in. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't need to really do very much, send it to your friends. And yet we keep a track of that. Also, the more points people have within the system, the quicker we get them invited into the trading engine because it's the people who are doing more activity or the people who are exactly. bringing more. So, yeah. Exactly. Now, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this whole drone delivery because huh. you're probably the first person I came across that's talking about, oh, yeah, we got drones delivering. I'm like, wait, it's happening right now because... I had no idea. I don't know if I've been living on a rock. Maybe that's the case, or maybe I've just been too focused on, you know, Bitcoin and the crypto space. But I'm like, are we going to see like drones basically doing the same type of deliveries that we're accustomed to seeing, like with the mail service or pretty much anybody that delivers anything? Because that's very interesting. Because I didn't know that drone companies are actually like doing deliveries right now. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. So yeah, there, there are there, there are quite a few drone companies doing drone deliveries in different locations. But in, in the US, at least 30 locations are doing drone delivery. And these are Walmarts. There's a couple of other retailers doing it as well. Walmart is the big one. So let's talk about them. They're doing a lot of it around Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth. And so what they're doing is they're setting up their drone uh, deliveries within their parking lot. Um, they're loading up firing them off to someone's house takes five minutes, 10 minutes, and then they're coming back. And so they're currently doing it. But the issue they're having are, are starting to have is that because people own the air rights and haven't given permission, people are starting to push back a little bit. So in the, in Texas, we've pe seen people shoot them down because they don't have permission. So they're like, Hey, I'm going to shoot you down. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, okay, you don't need to do that. Come to us. It's free. Claim your air rights. Come to us. Uh, and then we will connect the dots and we will get you income for that. If you don't want them in your airspace, that's absolutely fine. What we can do is we can draw a no, no fly zone. And um, so we can tell the drone company, hey, don't fly through Mr. Smith's airspace, please. But if you do, there's going to be a fee. And that's what we're looking at with that. So there's also drone, one, one com um, company called uh, Zipline, I think, did a lot of drone delivery with, uh, with Rwanda. Uh, they did a lot of testing there and that was around blood delivery really interesting right they were actually saving lives right helping save lives because uh, particularly with these regions where childbirth was an issue they couldn't get blood quickly they would drone it out and it would save lives in the uk as well in london they've started doing delivery from hospital to hospital of particular medicines the one i'm really keen on if people get moving on is organ delivery right because if you think about organ delivery the main problem with that is speed right if you don't get it there quickly gone so there's these real like really beneficial use cases 
but it all requires the air rights themselves to be available to be used, right? You can't just trespass. And that's where we come in and we help regulate that or mitigate people's legal risk. So also one of the things about drones, when you look at them and you do the research on it, so drone delivery, when they get to scale, right? So they have to get to scale. So when they get to scale, the costs are about a dollar uh, per delivery, right? About a dollar. Because you have no humans really in the loop. You might have one watching 200 or whatever. But generally no human in the loop. Uh, and they f- fly what's called beyond visual line of sight. So they're mm-hmm. effectively autonomous, right? When you get them moving properly. As opposed to, let's say, your dasher or whoever is flying your burger down. That's eight, nine bucks, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a huge difference. It's also like dangerous for the dashers, right? They can't get right. Started, all the time and all that kind of stuff. So this kind of helps all that. So yeah, the way it works in Texas, these uh, drone deliveries, they get an order in, it comes, they pick it up, they fly across, they hover above your front door, they drop it down on a string, let it off, done. Yeah, that's how it works. And yeah, we are, if you like, the people who come in and help regulate that. But not only that, because we're incentivizing the community to build this network, to put air rights in, to put their neighbors' air rights in, to collect the drone signals for incentives. They're all being part of this network. They're all being part of this network and they're all gathering value from this network as well. So that's what we're really keen on because without communities, these drones, they won't fly. They won't because communities are like, and you see it in Texas, they're like, you haven't asked, so I'm going to shoot you down or you haven't asked, (laughs) you're annoyed and you're just, you're getting people offside, right? So you come probably what you're doing with us is you're giving your permission and then the drone company is free. Okay. Cause yeah, cause now that you're talking about it and I'm like really picking up on it, it's in the sense, the same thing with if somebody was to trespass on your property right now, it's yeah, like, it hey, is. man, <laughs> like, yeah, legally. especially in Texas, you know, they got, they can carry weapons out there. So Texas, yeah. they, you know, they, they gun ready. So legally, I'm not shocked. Exactly the was- same. Yeah. You've hit the nail right on the head. Legally, it's exactly the same in the U S Canada, UK. This space above your property is yours, like it's yours. And up until now, it hasn't been, because drones haven't been that prevalent or people haven't really been thinking about it too much, not a lot of people know that. Right. Yeah, sure, the big real estate people, they know that, right? That's why they've all come to our platform. They're looking to tokenize and monetize their rights. It, they understand. Exactly. Air rights in New York can be like like four or $500 a square foot, right, for the air, right? So it's, yeah. it's huge. And they understand that, but individuals, around areas that are like neighborhoods, they don't necessarily, they don't even, they think someone else owns it, right? They think, hey, the government, right. no, you own it. You may as well make money out of it. Exactly, especially if you're not utilizing it right now. Exactly, um, like Airbnb, right? So Airbnb, they right. came in, they said, hey, you got a spare room, you can make money out of that. You'd be like, hey, yeah, monetize it. You know, that's crazy. It's like now it's, yeah, if you don't do it, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now. How do you envision the future of digital marketplaces and what role do you see SkyTrade playing in that future? Yeah, so digital marketplaces, yeah, there's quite a few out there. Really, when we go back to what we were talking about, the, where we see ourselves playing that from an air rights perspective is really the main air rights marketplace, right? The main digital air rights marketplace. For us, building it on crypto makes it just easier to do actually it's strange people look at crypto and they go, that's got to be difficult for us it's actually easier building this without crypto is really difficult because you can't actually bring the two parties together in a coherent way right you have to go and you have to seek people you have to put a load of documents together on both sides with us you can actually transact instantaneously on the thing and then the rest of the registration takes care of uh, behind the background so without crypto it's really hard to do so for us i, I and, and in answer to your question I see a bunch more of these marketplaces getting built out, not necessarily around air rights, but around a bunch more stuff, um, particularly around crypto. When you look at crypto incentives to build like networks and marketplaces, maybe you don't call Helium a marketplace, but for sure it's a, a network. When you see crypto incentives for that, when you see it for like Hivemapper and things like that, and while it might not be a marketplace, there is a marketplace in the background because there's a buyer of that data, yeah. right? So. Right. It might not seem like a consumer marketplace where you would go and like in Amazon or whatever, but it is to to a lesser to an extent. Whereas we right. think we're bringing it more to a kind of we're bringing it to a retail market, but we're using B two B, which are the people who own a lot of the real estate, as the right. kind of backbone of the asset, right? And a lot of these companies, these real estate people, are really interested in using their assets however they can. And for crypto traders. It's not like you're coming in and trading a meme coin, right? Which has value. If you would like to do that, that's absolutely exactly. 
uh, great if you, that's what you want to do. But this actually has an asset. It's an asset you're trading. So that gives it more value and more weight in, in the world. So I see a bunch more digital marketplace opening, particularly around crypto incentives. And I actually see crypto incentives are going to start finding their way into what we see, think of as traditional marketplaces because mm -hmm. it brings more people in. It also makes it easier to transact, I think. So yeah, certainly our place in it, certainly my vision, our ambition is to be mm -hmm. the largest air rights marketplace globally. Currently we are, but that's because we're really short. Yeah. It's early in our trajectory and early in yeah. the trajectory of such a thing. But definitely that's where I see us being, yeah. Yeah, and just to touch on that whole meme coins, and not to knock any meme coin traders no. out, I like meme coins too, sure. but the fundamentals behind some of them, they might not be there. There might not be a, a real backed asset value behind it. Like I said, yeah, not, and, and it's okay. Even <laughs> that, yeah, exactly. Right. If people want to speculate, I, I'm, my background, I'm originally from Dublin, right? From Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a huge horse racing industry here. Huge. It's massive, right? <laughs> I, I like going down yeah. and on the horses, right? So there's no problem right. with that. That's actually like good and that's fine. And also it brings in kind of a different element to a market. So no, definitely not to dismiss the meme coin. I'm just, I guess my point is just that this, uh, does have an asset to back it as well. So exactly. it's, you can go in, you can trade it if you like to trade, because that's what you do. You're a trader. You might trade meme coins, you might trade Bitcoin, whatever. You can now trade another asset effectively. Right. And that's why I was trying to make sure that <clears throat> people understand is like this particular project right away already has some type of value behind it. Why? Because these are real properties. So right. <laughs> you got to think from it, from that perspective. Next question here for you in. Are there plans for expansion? I know right now we're at beginner's level. As far as your guys' roadmap, what does that look like in the next couple of months? Are we going to see some more developments, you know, in a year from now? What does your guys' roadmap and expansion look like in the next couple of months, year or two? Sure, yeah. Yeah. So I guess short term, the trading engine, the auction house, as I said, we're gated. We're bringing more people into that. That'll be to open it like fully live on the roadmap after we've got everyone through that we need and ironed out all those bits and pieces fully live. Anyone can come on and just go in and try. So that's definitely there on the roadmap. We, in terms of expansion for locations, yes, for sure. Um, as I said, we have a, about eight and a half thousand air rights parcels now that are valued at over 30 million. Uh, we have line of sight on about 22 to 25 million or 22 to 25,000 air rights parcels uh, through our real estate partners. And that will give us a value in excess of about 120 million. There's certain locations we're really keen on within the US. We're keen on Dallas, we're keen in New York, we're keen in Florida. There's a bunch of them, but there's one specifically that we're looking at to put more of our efforts into those ones. We're definitely focused on the US, right? So there is opportunity within the UK. UK is very valuable. Their air rights, particularly in London, they estimate London's air rights just in zone one and two to be worth 52 billion um, of underutilized air rights. So definitely there's a market there, but we think the U.S. for us is the right place to be. There's the mix of the drones plus the real estate, plus just the way the state and federal system works in the U.S. is interesting because it means states can take different decisions around how quickly they move things. And that's quite interesting to us as well. Uh, and also because around air rights, particularly around drones, the federal government control the federal airspace whereas the low altitude airspace is more controlled by the states and the cities. So that makes it an interesting mix for us as well. And our investors are in the US as well. So that doesn't matter. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so right now, mainly the focus is US properties. A little bit of UK, that's That's down the road. I'd, I'd say in terms of roadmap, if you're talking, I'd say we'd have something in there within 12 months. But yeah, this these first 12 months, for sure, focus on the US, yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. So people that are watching, listening. Hey, air rights. If you're, if you're looking for a new venture or something to get into, uh, I think you might want to check out sky trade and what they're building here. Cause I know for sure, once I get off this, I'm going to go ahead and put in my address to see <laughs> what it might be worth. Cause we do have a nice little view. I'm not saying a little large or anything like that, but the fact that a little more makes you want to go ahead and start doing some research in real estate. good marriage because i know from talking to like other people that are in the real estate world they feel like blockchain can really take real estate to that next level especially when it comes to just contracts and stuff like that but something like this this is pretty cool because i had no idea what 
Air Right was. I didn't know that was the sure. real thing. And now after you get me educated on it, this is oh I'm like now I'm got that investor kind of mindset. And I'm yeah. like, let me go ahead and look at some other states, other properties. Let's go ahead and look at kind of views they might have. If yeah. they're if they don't own the air rights, let me go ahead and try to buy the air right. And then now if they eventually somewhere down the line find the platform, they're like, Oh man, I wanna go ahead and buy my air rights. Wait, somebody owns it already. Hey, <laughs> I beat you to the punch. And it seems like that's going to be something that's going to be really valuable, like you said earlier. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I think on that as well, the, the, the important thing, I guess, is if you own property is to claim your air rights. OK, so it's to go on to the go on to our SkyTart trade right now, claim your air rights, click it through, and then we tokenize it for you and you're ready to go. You can actually go on right now and you can see we have a bunch of stuff tokenized. You can't buy it right now. You can rent it unless you're through the, the whitelist. But yeah, exactly as you said, like you could come on now with your trader mindset. If you're behind the whitelist and you can go, yeah, okay, those A, B, C, D, I want to buy. I think that's valuable. Go ahead and do that. And when you look at the valuation of air rights, when we look at trades that have happened in the, in the Web2 world, the valuation of the air rights are anywhere from 5 to 20% of the value of the real estate just as a, as a kind of a comparable, right? So right. if you're thinking about it, if you're looking, okay, so this is a million bucks, okay, this could be up to 20% of that, five to 20, depending on the location, depending on all sorts of factors. But whatever way you look at it, it's got a value, right? Even right. if it's just a house somewhere. We've had people approach us with farmland and say, hey, we're interested in using this for like infrastructure purposes. And we're interested in the air rights for things like air taxis and drones. And we're close to a town. Is this valuable? Can we use it? We're like, yeah, of course. Someone understands that use case and we will and we'll purchase it. So yeah. All right. All right. Now, folks, we are wrapping up here today's show before we go ahead and uh, take off here. Jonathan, want to make you come on to the show and talk to us about your project here, SkyTrade. Yeah. Seems like you guys have built something that's pretty valuable and seems like it might be hopefully down the road, five, six years. I'm like, hey, I remember SkyTrade. Now all of a sudden I'm seeing their billboards they're everywhere. So this could be the start of something. So I'm, you know, hoping that, you know, everything works out for you and your company. Before we go ahead and uh, pretty much exit stage left. Any last words you'd like to go ahead and say, man? And nothing. Just if people want to uh, go and check us out, go to sky.trade. You can sign up to the wait list and you can also just sign up and you can uh, see what we're doing and you can rent airspace, refer people in, start building your points. And yeah, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at drone e -Vitol, So you can get me there as well. And any questions, just reach out. I'm always open to chatting. If anyone wants to get involved in the project in any other way, whether it be like marketing or even from a development side, we're always happy to chat to people. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate you guys watching, listening, where you might be. I'm your host, The Wolf Crypto. That's Jonathan. Sky Trade, folks. Go check them out. Again, this is not financial advice. Always do your homework. Do your due diligence. But until the next time, I'm your host, Wolf Crypto. That's it for now. Until next time, take it easy, y'all. Peace.